Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. With social media a global hit, especially with young people, educationalists are starting to wonder how their success can be usefully harnessed in the classroom. But while students might think it's a good idea, some parents wonder if having fun on Facebook really can teach their children anything useful. We explore the whole subject now on Learning World. Singapore is an economic leader in Southeast Asia and one of the world's top 10 competitive economies. The country believes that education is vital to maintaining their financial ambitions. To that end, the government is investigating the possibilities of using social media for teaching purposes. Let's see how it is working. To try to make sure Singapore remains one of the most economically advanced countries in the world, the government's invested heavily in overhauling and upgrading its education system. A maths teacher poses a problem to a class at Singapore's Nian Secondary School and then instructs them to use Twitter to quickly send her their answers. If it's doing um, social networking, it's better because we are, um, people are sometimes like, shy to ask questions or voice their opinions about um, certain topics and using social media will be like uh, less awkward. Nian is what the Singapore government calls a future school, a state-run school with well-equipped labs and classrooms where new technologies are tested to see how they can be used at other schools in the country. It's also been named by Microsoft as a pathfinder school for the way it uses technology. We want to see how we can then bring and lead that technology in to enhance the learning because those are the tools that are used by the students and I know that if we use them well with good teaching methods, you will cause a fundamental shift in how teaching and learning is delivered in the classroom. Teachers now use Facebook in their classes to send web links to pupils. Students use Twitter during English lessons to summarize literary passages. In home economics and art classes, teachers and students use picture sharing and infographic sites so everyone can see the same images. We're talking about using social media as and when, when it is necessary. Uh, so teachers have to learn to be strategic in when they apply social media and it should be done at a point where we can capture the students' attention the most. Teachers constantly monitor and share feedback on the use of social media and other technologies in the classroom to fine-tune teaching methods. They say that students' grades for project work have improved since the experiment began and the teachers acknowledge that they too are learning all the time from their pupils. Well, that school is still using social media. But do teachers really have to use Facebook and Twitter? What are the advantages? And why do some people think that it is so important to get technology into the classroom? We put all these questions to Sri Srinivasan, technology journalist and professor of professional practice at Columbia University in New York City. Technology is constantly evolving, but what about the world of education? Professor Sri Srinivasan, the chief digital officer at Columbia University, says there haven't really been many big leaps in innovations in education in the last 200 years. You could say maybe the dry erase marker and PowerPoint are the two innovations in education, which is kind of crazy to think that education should be the only, why should it be the only form of human uh, activity that hasn't innovated. He says the big innovation is going on right now and it's called social media. More powerful than the cell phone but as unpredictable as any innovation. For example, in 1996, nobody really knew what to do with emails. Now there's a similar problem with social media, both out in the world and in schools. Teachers need to be taught about social media just like they needed to be taught about using the web and email. And it's not a generational thing as much as it is an attitude thing. Some of the best people I know on social media are in their 70s. And then I know people in their 20s who know nothing about social media. They think they know, but they just go on Facebook and post some photos. The professor believes that social media will soon be as much a part of schools' routines as currently it is in people's everyday lives. But parents may share teachers' skepticism on the educational value of social media and worry about safety and privacy issues. I have to deal with skeptical parents all the time, including me. 
my twins are 10 years old and they're not on social media. And I'm very happy about that because they're not ready. They shouldn't be on Facebook till they're 13 years old. That's the rules of Facebook itself. The professor's classes at Columbia reflect his views. They start with students chatting and sharing ideas digitally and in person. He believes social media can bring more interaction and exchange of knowledge in the classroom, spelling the end of the traditional lecture with a teacher teaching and students maybe listening. Uh, I still believe in the magic that happens in a classroom where there are no devices and everybody's listening to the teacher and everybody's talking and sharing ideas. The new technology and the new systems, all they do is enhance what's happening. So, Professor Srinivasan says his mission is to ruin social media for his students. His aim is to make his students understand it's not a fun game, but a tool to be used with caution, strategically and with full attention. I spend between three and six minutes on every tweet I do, every post I write, because I have to kind of think about it, make sure it works, make sure it's accurate. I tell people social media is the only thing I do every day that can get me fired today. So I have to be very careful. And on Twitter, everything you write is archived in the U.S. Library of Congress. So I have to think about it. So I'm not writing it for my friends now. I'm writing it for my great-granddaughter. He says all teachers should be tra-digital, meaning they should have traditional skills but also be able to incorporate digital, social and mobile aspects as education is about sharing no matter on what platform. So as we've just heard, Sri Srinivasan thinks that there are no generational gaps between parents and children when it comes to social media. But many parents are concerned about the responsible and appropriate use of them in the classroom. Let's go to South America and see how one school in Colombia is trying to tackle the issue. In Bogota, Colombia, the Richmond Bilingual School brings together parents and children via cloud-based systems to surf the net and use social media. Like the over 660 other students at the school, Laura is attending her computer class. This year we've used a cloud-based program called Prezi a lot. That's a program for presentations for any project, not just for computer-related stuff. We've also used it for Spanish, we've used it for maths, for lots of presentations. Three years ago, the school implemented a pilot project unique in Colombia with a group of a dozen children aged between 9 and 12. They were trained to use social media like Facebook, Prezi and Google and share their knowledge with family and friends. It was such a success that they added it to the school's information technology curriculum. It encourages them too. OK, they invite parents, their families, they invite their friends to set up websites so they can have their own communication networks. This helps to improve communication within the family, but also with the school, the parents with the school, so the parents have a way to be connected to the learning process. The school regularly organizes sessions for parents where students show them how to do things like browse the school's website or use social media. Laura also helps her mother, Marta, who manages a property company. Using social media, Marta can now create profiles for her clients and share documents with them. Marta regularly turns to her daughter for help. For example, asking her how she can know that clients have received the information she's sent them. Laura explains where to look on the screen to check that information. Before I had Facebook and everything, but it wasn't the same because mum was like, no, this is dangerous. And I was like, but it isn't like that. You don't know. We talked about Facebook and I thought it was something really complex and complicated, but in fact it is useful. We sit together and look at her Facebook page. We sit together to look at my Facebook page. It's improved our relationship and brought us closer. And of course, social media are also part of our program, Learning World. 
Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter by using hashtag LearnWorld for example. Goodbye for now. Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.